I wonder if Dr. Budoff, you could just tell us a little bit about the underlying pathophysiology of cardiovascular disease, in particular as it pertains to dyslipidemia and what's driving that. Oh, yeah, thank you, uh, uh, Dr. Bott. So uh, I think when we, we think about the um, dyslipid, uh, dyslipidemia and how it impacts our, our coronary tree, uh, we have to remember that, that really it starts with uh, uh, LDL cholesterol itself. And as it gets incorporated into uh, macrophages and those macrophages turn into foam cells, that's really the, the biological basis for development of atherosclerosis. And it's impacted by a lot of things that Dr. Navar talked about, um, you know, concomitant risk factors and certainly inflammation. Uh, oxidation is very important. But when we think about how we, we can take a, uh, something as, a, as commonplace as a cholesterol molecule and, and end up with an atherosclerotic plaque, it really uh, requires a, a lot of different factors. But I think the, the LDL and the smaller, denser LDL becomes easier to penetrate the endothelium, uh, get into the uh, underlying blood vessel and then, and then uh, turn that macrophage into a malignant foam cell that, that really can cause uh, atherosclerosis and, and develop our, our plaque that grows over time, incorporates more lipids, and, as it, and eventually, uh, unfortunately, when it ruptures, can lead to a macrovascular event such as a heart attack, stroke, or cardiovascular death. Yeah, no, that's really a nice play-by-play play of exactly how dyslipidemia can cause so much trouble. You know, maybe I can turn back to Dr. Navarre for a second and just see what are your thoughts in terms of targeting that risk with aggressive LDL lowering? How useful is that as a strategy to reduce cardiovascular risk? And how low should you go? What is the right target for whom? Uh, is it still less than 100? Is it that 70 to 100 range? Is it less than 70? Is it even lower than that? Uh, you know, the guidelines do give us some guidance, but there are lots of guidelines out there and, and a number of them have different cutoff points. And I think physicians like numbers, um, but, but uh, what do you think about LDL lowering, it being a strategy for risk reduction and how low to go? Yeah, so this is a really important um, question and one that's really changed over time. If you look back to the early studies of cholesterol lowering, like the 4S study, patients with coronary heart disease, the lipid levels in that study were, you know, what we would now consider completely unacceptable, LDLs of 160 and above. Um, what we found as we've continued trials, we've, we've seen a progressive lowering in the inclusion criteria and the, the treatment that, or, or the LDL levels of those who are receiving treatment. And we have yet to find a group with LDL cholesterols that do not benefit from LDL lowering. And I think that's, uh, the best data from this really come from meta-analyses from the cholesterol treatment trialists, which show us that really the benefit of LDL lowering therapies has nothing to do with what your starting LDL is. It has to do with how much LDL you reduce on treatment. So for statins, the, the, proportion, the amount of benefit is directly proportional to the amount of LDL lowering. We also see from secondary analyses, there was a great analysis out of the Fourier trial showing that coronary and cardiovascular risk is lower, uh, the lower your LDL is, even down to levels well below 50 milligrams per deciliter. So we see almost a linear reduction in cardiovascular risk going down to levels of 30 milligrams or even lower. So we think about, uh, we used to have what we would consider targets, but really the guidelines are now kind of making us think more in terms of triggers. So what level of LDL confers the potential for a reasonable amount of LDL reduction below which you would actually see a reduction in cardiovascular events. So the new uh, US guidelines recommend thinking about adding on lipid lowering therapy and secondary prevention for those with LDLs over 70. So 70 isn't our goal, it's not a target, it's really a trigger to say if you're over 70, you probably have a substantial room for improvement still for lowering LDL cholesterol. So that needle has shifted um, you know, pretty dramatically. The European guidelines actually go farther and in the highest risk patients are recommending trying to get our patients less than 55 milligrams per deciliter. Now I would argue that that actually is pretty in line with what the US guidelines are. If you think of the US guidelines using 70 as a trigger for therapy, 
the European guidelines using less than 55 as a target, then we think, you know, if you're looking at the US guidelines and you're intensifying therapy at 70, you're gonna get most of your patients down to 50. And that's a level where some IVA studies have actually shown if you can get LDLs 50 and below, you can actually start to see not just plaque stabilization, but um, actually a regression of atherosclerotic plaque. Yeah, no, that's a nice way you've tied together the epidemiology with the underlying biology with some insights from imaging studies from the past. I'll just add that LDL, I think, is a critically important risk factor. And now we know lower is better. You can get there safely through a variety of different medications. Obviously, diet and lifestyle modification is an important foundation. But for many at-risk patients, uh, pharmacotherapy will also be needed. In recent years, I think we've discovered, or perhaps it's more fair to say rediscovered, that triglycerides are also important in determining cardiovascular risk. And they seem to be an independent uh, risk factor. Actually, Dr. Nimona has done a lot of work uh, on that. And it seems like there are two, even levels of triglycerides that we used to call normal are at a minimum associated with excess cardiovascular risk. And this is something I think in evaluating a patient's risk profile that we can no longer ignore. But we'll come back to that a little bit later in our discussion. 